Hello and good morning from the cruel, brutal, neo-feudal, capitalist dictatorship of Great Britain. I hope you're having an amazing day. Today I'm standing in front of the Tower of London, where traitors were historically brought for torture and execution. And this place, after the revolution, will be utilized as a uh, re-education center for anyone who has opposed the revolution. Yes, so... After the revolution, listen up, British comrades, all the reactionaries and those who supported the reactionaries and those filthy class traitors will be brought to this place where their heads will be struck off as a warning to all other presumptuous counter-revolutionaries. So today, I'm going to show you a little bit of um, interesting European civilization. Thomas Hobbes described life in Europe in the medieval times as nasty, brutish, and short. In other words, until the last two centuries, Europe, for the most part, was rather brutal and barbaric, for lack of a better word. Uh, back in those days, um, a few centuries ago, in the Tudor era and beyond, even before the Tudor era, Europe had not yet acquired its reputation as being the uh, pristine and civilized uh, civilization that uh, Douglas Murray and his friends like to, like to associate it with. Today, consider yourself privileged because you are going to get a first-hand look into Jordan Peterson and Douglas Murray's superior Western barbarism. I mean, I mean Western civilization in all its glory on full display. And I paid over 30 pounds to enter this horrifyingly fascinating place here. Yeah? So do please do the bare minimum of clicking subscribe. It's not hard, just take your finger and click on the subscribe button. There we go. Even a three-year-old could do that, right? You don't want to end up on the counter-revolutionary traitors list, do you? Okay, now that you subscribe, let's begin. Okay, do you guys see this building behind me? This building is known as the White Tower, which is the oldest building in the entire Tower of London. Now, this tower was commissioned by William the Conqueror, the Norman King, in order to serve as a military rampart. It wasn't initially used as a torture and execution center, but this white tower here is meant to create a fearsome and imposing appearance so as to signify to his uh, new subjects, his new Anglo-Saxon subjects, that, uh, yeah, we're in charge now. So it wasn't meant to look very um, welcoming. You often hear the collocation king in the castle used in the English language, but as a matter of fact, kings did not actually live in castles. No, castles actually served a twofold purpose. One was to symbolize the authority of the monarchy in order to show the might and power of the monarchy by, with its imposing status, stature. And the other was meant to serve as a defensive rampart. And so the knights would typically live in a castle. Another purpose of castles was to serve as a temporary holiday home for the monarchs. You know, it was sort of like a summer retreat, if you will. And the last but not least, the most gruesome purpose of these places 
was only really, it only really came into effect long after William the Conqueror died. And it was his successors who decided to turn this place into a uh, torture and execution center. So, anybody who went through the front gates in the Tudor times would not likely see the outside world again. And it was really during the reign of King Henry VIII where the Tower of London as a torture and execution center really becomes very, very notorious. Henry VIII carried out, carried out the highest number of executions in all of British history. So he's remembered as one of the greatest Britons and at the same time as one of the most brutal Britons. He did a lot of purging in this place. Um, he purged two of his own wives in this place as well. So yeah, I'm going to show you the execution grounds now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we get to the juicy part of the video, the imprisonment, torture and execution part. So if you're squeamish, I suggest you turn this off right now. Let's go! From the 1100s, the tower was an important refuge and a royal law court for London's Jewish community. English Jews had to pay punishingly high levels of tax in the 1200s. Those who could not pay were imprisoned in the tower with their families. 600 Jews were imprisoned here in 1278, accused of coin clipping, shaving the edges of coins to steal the silver. Many were innocent, but Jews were punished far more severely than Christians for the same crime, and over 250 were hanged on Tower Hill. 
Oh, I see. So the people who ran the Tower of London were Hamas, then? Oh, I see. So Palestinian militants in the 1100s and the 1200s were persecuting the Jews, weren't they? They were accusing them falsely of things they didn't do and bullying them and killing them. You know what's really hilarious, though, is that Western supremacists like Douglas Murray will try and pin that on the bad brown Arabs. Yes, apparently Jewish people were perfectly safe in Western society before the evil bad Arabs came around. The anti-Semitic Palestinian terrorists came around. The European people were great friends of the Jews. Yes, you know, when, when Europeans say things like, oh, Israel is necessary because the Jews need a safe space, the question you should ask is, a safe space from whom? From people like your ancestors? Yeah, is, it, is that the, the sort of safe space that the Jews need, Douglas Murray? A safe space from your ancestors? This here, ladies and gentlemen, is known as the Traitor's Gate. Yes, it is this gate through which all these filthy counter-revolutionaries shall be dragged by a horse and taken to the top of the tower where their heads shall be struck off as a warning to all other presumptuous counter-revolutionaries. And now I'm going to show you some wonderfully creative contraptions they use to uh, inflict pain on people. Truly, the human mind is very creative when it comes to sadism. Now this lovely little apparatus is known as the torture rack. The, the idea behind the torture rack is that the victim would be stretched, you know, like it's kind of like doing yoga except you, you are forced to bend over backwards quite literally as far as you possibly can. Not a fun form of yoga. You know, people like Jordan Peterson and Douglas Murray, and to a certain extent Richard Dawkins, like to talk about Western society as if it is singularly civilized. As if, unlike other types of societies, Western society is the only society that got civilization right. That only Western society has got a conception of human rights. But as we can see, judging by the gruesome history of the Tower of London and the absolutely vile and barbaric ways in which the Jews were treated in medieval times, even up to the early modern times, it's clear to me that you guys are not angels. Now, are you, am I saying that you are worse than, say, Chinese society or Arabic society or Malay society or Indian society? Of course not. Every society has its sins and every society has its, has its own dark past. And Asians and Africans have never pretended like their societies do not have dark pasts. Well, scratch that. There are psychotic, crazy Chinese chauvinists that I often argue with who talk as if China has a pristine history. I'm not saying that Chinese history is any cleaner than European history. But the fact of the matter is that, yes, every society is capable of cruelty, of barbarism, and sadism. 
And the dark side of human nature is not exclusive to non-Western societies. The universal conception of human rights that we think about is a very, very recent thing. The idea of cruel and unusual punishment, for example, is not something that uh, Westerners had in mind hundreds of years ago. So I believe that it is actually low-key racist to say that Western society is singularly civilized because you have your sins to bear as well. And the fact of the matter is that the Palestinians should not be paying for your ancestors' crimes against the Jewish people. You tortured and persecuted Jewish people. Or I should say your ancestors tortured and persecuted Jewish people. Are we blaming you for the sins of your ancestors? Of course not. But at the same time, we won't let you pass the baton to the innocent Palestinians and make them foot the bill for your historic crimes because you don't get to pin what your ancestors did to the Jews on the Palestinians who have nothing to do with the witch hunts and persecutions that occurred in Europe. I always find it very funny when people like Douglas Murray say, uh, the Jewish people deserve a homeland in their ancestral land because they're not safe anywhere else in the world. Really, they're not safe from whom? From people like you? Because they were always safe in the Muslim world. And yet, in Europe, as we can see, they were being persecuted left, right and centre. So, makes you wonder, who are they not safe from? Am I correct? In the infamous bloody tower, there it is. The Richard Lincoln turns as the guards of the tower, the left hand tower. His name is changed to the Tower of Blood, or Bloody Tower, during the Elizabethan period. Commemorating many tragic events that happened with it. Not them all. Perhaps the saddest must be the alleged murders in 1483 of the two boy princes. Edward V was an uncrowned king. He had a little brother called Richard, the Duke of York. They were just 12 and 9 years old. And they were brought down from Ludlow Castle to prepare for Edward's coronation on the death of his father, Edward IV, who died of good living in April of 1483. They were supposed to have been looked after by their uncle, Richard, the Duke of Gloucester. But in June of that year, Richard declared those boys to be illegitimate. In July, he declared himself to be the king. And you know him as Richard III. In August, the sightings of the children have got fewer and fewer. And then we're told on hot summer's day, or evening, two men stole to those boys' bedrooms and murdered them in their beds by putting pillows on their faces and suffocating them. Their little bodies were then bundled down the steps leading into the Wakefield Tower, and they were hidden beneath the stone. The next day, they were secretly removed by a priest and buried on the south side of the White Tower. And that's where they remain, undisturbed for 191 years until some workmen were carrying out restoration work, removed an old stairwell, and found the skeletal remains of two small boys. Experts of the day declared them indeed to be the missing princes, and they were taken to Westminster Abbey, re in Innocence Corner, where they are to this day. King Richard I was killed in the battle of the Another man who spent time up there was Sir Walter Raleigh, the great navigator. He spent 13 and a half years up there. 13 and a half long years! Every single day they made his life an absolute misery. For 13 and a half long years, they locked him up there with his wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning she'd get up and go, you never take us out. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually he was executed on the orders of James I and when his head was cut off, it was preserved and then presented to his truly devoted wife who put it in a red leather bag, tied the bag to her belt and took it everywhere she went. Every now and again she'd bring the head out, put it on a pillow and talk to him. 
She did that for 29 years. When she died, they buried the head in her coffin with her. So, gentlemen, even in death. <laughs> You are surrounded by an awful lot of glory, gruesome history, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're from the British Empire, yeah. all this history is yours. And if you're American, yeah. it could have been yours if only you paid your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for those of you good people who stuck around till the end of my video, I have a bonus treat for you guys. This is St. Duncan's Church, which was built in pre-Norman times, during the Anglo-Saxon times. And this church is well over a thousand years old. Let's take a look. It's a stone's throw away from the Tower of London. Hey. Here you go. <laughs> Good boy. Nice. Nice. Yeah, this is the sort of church that you'd find in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. If any of you have played that awful game, the sort of church that Eivor would be a raiding. Yes, this is St. Duncan's Church, which is just a stone's throw away from the Tower of London. All right, thank you everyone for watching my video. If you made it this far, thank you very much. Have a great day.